In this video, my brother Zion Lex argues that the Ashante people are Hebrews from the tribe of Judah and some other tribes in the south. I am going to play his video and then I'm going to peer review it. I must say this though, that it is important to always critically evaluate sources and the credibility of the sources. I took the time to check my brother Zion Lex's source for this information, and it appears to be from this rabbi, Christopher Shoemaker. This is the source, and when we click on the links, the URLs up top here, we see who the author of the source is. And I believe this rabbi um, identifies as a rabbinic pastor. Um, I must say that I am not surprised for the inaccuracies of my brother's source or assertions. Um, I will provide a link to the website in the description box for you to explore further. But for now, Let's listen to our brother Zion Lex, and then I would come back and critique the information. Let's listen in. All right. Now, the Jews of Ashanti or the Ashanti Yehudim is a very impactful story to take in. Um, if I could share with you um, some of the words here, the term Ashanti represents the predominant tribe in Ghana of West Africa, formerly known as the Gold Coast, is predominantly believed to have come from North Africa, and many fingers even point to Egypt or Assyria. And that's very important to note in terms of the origin story of the Ashanti. The origin story of the Ashanti is that they may come from North Africa, possibly even Egypt or Assyria, which would then give credence to the Israelite sentiment that through exile and forced migration, the Jews that were expelled from the land of Canaan in 70 AD eventually make their way along the Nile Valley and they come into the West Coast, North Africa, and they settle finally in um, huge pockets of West Africa. It's a very, very important point to, to um, establish and to lay out. It has been pointed out by the first white men that came to Ghana and met the Ashanti. They noted the Egyptian-like architecture and design just as equally as some of these so-called Egyptian and or Assyrian traits could also point to a Hebraic origin. So the style of their architecture uh, echoed that of ancient Kemet or that of ancient Egypt, but it also echoed that of the biblical Hebrews and even carried what is called Assyrian traits. For Israel was captive in both places and left an indelible mark on both, as well as a little Egyptian and Assyrian influence rubbed off somewhat on Israel. Also noted by such men was the Semitic or Arabic appearance, facial features of the Ashanti, as well as the reddish hue to their brown skin, which is also an Igbo trait, which is akin to Adam, whose name means red earth, and David, who is said to have been ruddy, a reddish complexion, and both of which are dark complexion to boot. I have already established in my early works regarding the Igbo, which I have linked to Gad and other Israeli tribes, that the first Hebrews and Jews were of a dark slash reddish complexion. And by red, of course, you know we mean the color brown, brown. Some believe and have voiced that the Ashanti may be related to the Yoruba. And if so, no wonder why, no wonder they have things in common with the Igbo, because the father of the Yoruba people was a traveling companion to Eri, the father of the Igbo people. Both the Igbo and the Ashanti holy men cover themselves in white chalk. African, tri African tribal names usually mean the people of. The people of, let me just do this really quick so you guys could follow the reading. The name Ashanti may come from the Hebrew word Ashan, 
meaning smoke, which is usually used in the context of the destruction of a city and may hint of the destruction of Israel by the Babylonian or Assyrian exiles or even the Roman ransacking of Israel. There was indeed even a town in Judea called Ashan in the book of First Chronicles chapter 659, also corresponding to its mention in the book of Joshua chapter 21 verse 6, where the word ayin, according to the Jewish encyclopedia, may be a corruption or variant of Ashan. If this all be true, it would mean that the Ashanti may possibly predominantly be Jews from the tribe of Judah or Levites, Simeonites, and Benjamites, who are all of the bordering tribes that lived around, near, or adjacent to the biblical city of Ashan. So the most important thing to understand is that the term Ashan literally in biblical Hebrew denotes a town in the tribal portion of Judah. Judah being one of the 12 sons of Israel, one of the 12 sons of Jacob, one of the tribal territories, one of the tribal portions in the land of Judah is a city called Ashan. Ashan is noted in biblical times to have been inhabited by not just Judites, but even you had Levites that lived in this city. So that the people from this city who eventually through forced migration and through exile that make their way into West Africa, that make their way into Ghana, that later on form the people known as Ashanti. The Ashan part literally represents the tribal territory that they come from, the biblical city of Ashan. The T at the end means of in Hebrew. It's possessive. It means of. So Ashanti means of Ashanti or of the people of Ashanti or of the city of Ashanti. Awesome. So, um, I just want to focus in on the meaning of Ashanti and where the name came from. My brother Zion Lex in the video claimed that the people from this city, this biblical city, Ashan, eventually through forced migration and through exile, they make their way into West Africa and then into Ghana. And later on, from this people, we get the Ashanti people, what most know as Ashanti. He goes on to emphasize that the Ashan part of Ashanti or Ashanti literally represents the tribal territory that these people come from the biblical city of Ashan. And then he goes on to say that the T at the end in Hebrew means off. It's possessive. So Ashanti or Ashanti means of Ashanti or of the people of Ashanti or of the city of Ashanti. Now, I must say that every point made here is inaccurate. Every point made here has nothing to do with how the name Ashanti came about and its meaning. It does sound good, but only to those who are fanatics and want to hear what we would call Kwekwanansi stories. Or Kwekwanansi tales. We don't have to make everything Hebrew. We don't have to just read articles online that agree with our preconceived ideas and then pass it off as truth or accurate. So, again, according to Zion Lex, the name Ashanti derives from the biblical city of Ashan and signifies the tribal territory of the people who migrated and settled in West Africa, specifically Ghana. He explains that the T at the end of Ashanti indicates possession, is possessive, or belonging in biblical Hebrew. 
However, it's important to note that these claims are not historical and they are not accurate and they lack scholarly evidence. While the explanation may sound intriguing, it is important to approach such assertions critically. What do we know about the Ashante people? Notice I'm not calling them Ashanti. I'm calling them Ashante. The Ashante people, who are part of the Akan ethnic group, typically adhere to a matrilineal inheritance system, tracing their lineage via the maternal line. I'll repeat that. The Ashante people who are part of the Akan ethnic group typically adhere to a matrilineal inheritance system, tracing their lineage via the maternal line. Now, this unique trait, if scrutinized, could potentially exclude them from discussions related to Hebraic traditions because we know that in the Hebrew context, lineage is traced patrilineal, not matrilineal. So if we scrutinize this about the Akan people, then we can actually exclude them from discussions related to Hebraic traditions. However, there's an exception within the Akans. There is a smaller group that follows a patrilineal inheritance pattern, which sets them apart within the Akan community. Hence, to fully comprehend the origins of the Ashante people, it's crucial to first explore the roots of the broader Akan population. We want to find out where the Akan people come from because out of the Akan people, do we have that Ashante group? So we have to first deal with the Akans before we talk about Ashante or Ashanti. There are numerous theories circulating regarding the original homeland of the Akans with proposed locations spanning from Israel, Egypt, Mesopotamia, Ethiopia, Kush, to the Ghana Mali Songa Empire. These are the oral traditions. Now, regardless of their initial place of origins, the Akans ultimately established themselves in the northern area of Ghana, a region referred to as Esre or Esremu. This name is inspired by the robust millet and sorghum plants that are native to this region. In the northern region, the Akans cohabited with ethnic groups identified by the Ba suffixes in their names, such as Dagomba, Nanumba, Kokomba, Bimoba. Later on, they migrated to the Bono territory, where the present-day town of Inkransa is situated. Historically, this entire region was referred to as Bono Manso, translating to the territory of Bono. Now, close to Inkransa, a town still retains the name Bono Manso. This was the location of Techiman a settlement inhabited by the Bono people. The monarchy of Techiman, who was also the ruler of the Bono kingdom, governed this area. It is believed that due to internal conflict, the Akans left Bono and began living alongside the Fante or the Fanti and possibly the Adanse people. So most Akans, when asked, trace their lineage back to Adanse. This might be due to the assumption that 
a dance is the birthplace of the extended family system, a crucial part of Akan culture often used to trace their roots. As such, a dance becomes a key point in their ancestry tale. While there are varying theories about the Akan's origins, suggested by scholars, chiefs, elders, and historians, there's a general agreement that the Akans originate from Adansi. Now, from Adansi, the Akans spread out to various areas, including Akwamu, Trifo, Hinman, Denchura, Asin, Achim, Wasa, Gomwa, and Amansia, among others. So, when discussing the Akans, it's important to acknowledge the following groups. The Bono people. This category encompasses Techiman, Doma, Drobo, Jamai, Wam. These were the original names before the collective term Bono was adopted. Interestingly, only Techiman was initially referred to as Bono. These tribes eventually united under the Bono Chimpim banner, with Techiman leading the pack. This unity resulted in their collective identification as Bono. It wasn't until the late 1940s to 1950s that these areas were renamed Brong Ahafo. But the original Bono is Techiman. Okay, going back to the groups that we have to acknowledge. I mentioned Bono, now Denjira, which is currently divided into two main factions, one living in Dunkwa and the other in the central region. Now we have Achim. This group has three or four subgroups, namely Achim Obwakwa, Achim Kotoku, and Achim Bosume. And then we have the Akwamu, we have the Akwapip, we have Wasa. Wasa is split into two main factors, Wasa Fiase and Wasa Amemfi. And then we have the Sefi, we have the Ahanta, we have the Fante, we have Gomwa, we have Agona, we have Kwewu, we have Dikoman, we have Inzema. Now, some members of the Inzema reside in Ghana while others are based in Ivory Coast. We have Anyen. Anyen is also located in the Ivory Coast. We have Bawale, also situated in the Ivory Coast. We have Awawi. All of these groups that I have mentioned have a common matrilineal inheritance system, a distinguishing characteristic of the Akans. Additionally, they are the Guans who identify as Akans. This includes the Banda, Badu, Sekwa, and Sampa. Notice that I have not mentioned Ashanti or Ashanti. What is the reason? Because they had not formed yet. They had not yet formed. The Ashanti we are familiar with today originated from a coalition of independent clans that I just mentioned. These clans, identifying as Akans, unified to establish what we now know as Ashanti or Ashanti. I repeat that again. You notice that in my mentioning of the Akans, I did not include the Ashanti or the Ashanti people. Why? Because they had not yet formed. There was no Ashanti or Ashanti, not yet. 
So it means that they are not the people of Ashan because the Ashan mentioned in the biblical text predates the formation of Ashanti or Ashanti. The group that we are referring to as Ashanti or Ashanti originated from a coalition of independent clans. The clans that I have mentioned previously. This is where they originate from. These clans, identifying as Akans, unified to establish what we now know as Ashanti or Ashanti. Unlike my brother Zanlek's assertion, the term Ashanti is derived from two words, Asa and Inti. Asa and Inti. Sa, when we say Sa in the local dialect, the local Akan or Ashanti dialect, Sa translates to fight or to spot. And when pluralized, it becomes Asa. So Asa means to fight. Inti means because or the reason why. So we have two words. Asa, Inti. That's where we get Asante from or asan, Ashanti from. So therefore, Ashante signifies because of war. It has nothing to do with the city of Ashan in the biblical text. Asa, Inti. That's where we get Ashante or Ashante from. Asa, Inti. Sa translates to fight or spot. When pluralized, is asa. And then inti means because of or the reason why. So therefore, ashante means because of war. Now, the name was chosen when these tribes, these Akan tribes, decided to form a confederation. They deliberated on the purpose of their unity. And the answer was Asa Inti. Why are we coming together as one people? Asa Inti, because of war. The principle was evident. If any member of this confederation was attacked, it will be considered an attack on all. Hence, they named themselves Asa Inti. Ashanti, or what we now know as Ashanti. This is how the name came about. It has nothing to do with the biblical text. It has nothing to do with the southern tribes of Judah, Reuben, Simon. Nothing. It has nothing to do with the city of Ashan. It has no ties to the tribe of Judah. Here are some of the notable groups that make up the Asa, Inti, Adanse, Amansie, Setre, Kwabri, Ahafo, Echuma, Manso, Achim, also known as Asante Achim. Within these aforementioned groups, there exist approximately 150 independent tribes. This raises the question, do they all originate from Judah? Are they all Jews? Or are we witnessing a case of shallow scholarship where we simply read articles on the internet and present them as credible? Articles on the internet from people who have no clue about what they are talking about. Don't even speak the language of the Ashanti people. Historically, these groups were under the dominion of the Denchira. 
in their pursuit of freedom, they joined forces to confront the powerful Dentura. The battle was fierce, resulting in substantial losses, nearly half. In need of more warriors, they turned northward and even resorted to buying slaves. After these groups that came together to form the Ashante, Asante, because of war, after gaining their independence, they instituted a rule that barred individuals from identifying with the original tribal or clan affiliations. So this is how Ashante came about. This brief synopsis offers a glimpse into the history of the Ashante. Again, it's crucial to tread carefully when making claims as misinformation can lead to confusion. This instance serves as a reminder of how misinterpretation can arise when one reads materials on subjects they are not familiar with and then pretend to be knowledgeable on the information. Now, in the second part, I will explore the subject of the Ashante stool in greater depth because my brother Zion Lex is trying to tell us that there is a link between the Ashante stool and the seat that the supposed Pharisees sat on, the seat of Moses. Let me ask you, who sat on that seat? The Pharisees? Or was it the Sadducees? 